Guys, what's up? We're back with another episode of The Convo. I have with me today, Yemi Alade. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. It's been a crazy year, COVID and yeah. everything else. 2020. How's 2020 been like for you? Like to you? Strange, awkward, different, not what I planned. <laughs> but in, in everything that has happened so far, um, I think I found, I, I, I got the opportunity to like really rest. Okay. You know, and focus on the true definition of happiness. Hmm. Yeah. Ah, so like a, a, a lot of introspection yes, for you this exactly. year. And truly rest because you're a very busy woman when you're not, you know, releasing albums, you're touring. I had a full continental um, tour planned out already, ticket selling, all gone to zilch. Sorry about that, it's fine, it's okay. But it's plan. you know, in, 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 in the absence of that, we're getting a new album. Yes, you will still get the album. We're getting a new album, Empress. Yeah, uh, I heard you recorded part of the album, I don't know if it's part or all of it in Amsterdam? Um, 80% of the Empress album was recorded in Amsterdam. Why Amsterdam? I really don't know. So <laughs> let me just take you on this really short journey. Uh -huh. um, I started off a recording session in Miami okay. and then I met some really nice people there. And I thought um, when I did my last European tour, mm -hmm. Amsterdam was my last city. Okay. And okay. it was one of the most memorable. And as they mentioned that they have a working studio there, they sold the idea to us literally. Okay. I thought, let's go back, let's pick up from where we stopped. Ah. And so we went to Amsterdam. I, I, I went along with two Nigerian producers, um, v Tech and Edda Boy, okay. and it was worth every every minute of our time. It was an amazing experience. Very amazing. When you find Dutch guys um, producing beats like they're Nigerians, that's mad. Yeah, that's, that's how far Af our music has traveled. That's how that's influential how our yeah. Nigerian music is. So, like, mind blowing. What does it feel like going, because you're always touring, you get into a new city and you're performing your songs and you're seeing foreigners like singing your songs word for word. What, what does that feel like? It always melts my heart. Always melts my heart. I've always been of the opinion, like a, a, a lot of many others out there, that music really doesn't have one, any language, like mm -hmm. one particular language. Music is like a, its own universe. It's, it's, I think it's language be emotion. Yeah. Yeah. And so everybody can tap into that. Yeah. All your albums, I've noticed that all your albums have had themes. Mm. You're very, very big on themes. Yeah. What can we expect from Empress? What's the leading theme here? Whew. Um, in terms of the title, yeah. Empress. Um, first of all, expect royalty. You know, because okay. it is what it is. Yeah. Um, also, that's just from the title, but from the music itself, just expect growth, expect surprises, expect fusions you never thought, expect sounds you never reckoned I would be on, expect collaborations that are that would that would strike your musical nerve and you'd be so excited in a good way, mm. you know. So expect all of that, and most especially expect. Yemi Alade. <laughs> I was still going to get some of that R and B side of Yemi Alade. Why don't you just listen to the album and find out? <laughs> I'm trying to get the, the juice before it's, time. It's juicy, man. I, I went all the way. I, I I really really enjoyed this album, and, and I realized that there's a strong dancehall reggae influence on the album. Ah, interesting. Yes, without even knowing. Yeah, that explains yes. boys. You know. That explains boys. Exactly. The first single. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. What do you consider when you're trying to pick a single? What do you consider? The first, the number one thing is how the song makes me feel. Okay. How the song makes my team feel. And then, um, for instance, sometimes you just check the temperature of the room. For instance, True Love, the mm -hmm. reason why that song was released um, was because 2020 needed happiness. Hmm. And that song has been giving me happiness every day from the day we recorded it in Amsterdam. Okay. And I wanted to share it. Nice, nice. Yes. Interesting. Another thing about the Yemi Alade brand is Yemi Alade is unapologetically Pan African. Oui. You you carried, you know, the Af the continent, as we say in Nigeria, on your head. Like this. <laughs> you know. Why, why do you do that? Because you don't have to, like, you're not forced to do so, but you chose to, to, to adopt that as a person, as a brand. Why did you do that? I think it's a calling. Hmm. Because I can't help it. 
I don't plan it. I didn't plan it. I never plan it. It just keeps happening. Yeah. So uh, I guess it's my calling. It's my it's my one destination being on unapologetically African. And that's that's quite. I feel like that's quite like a big shoe to feel. I know, right? Because I remember the first time I heard Yemi Alade, you know, and people were saying Mama Africa, and, you know, that's the name of her. And my mind, you know, naturally went to Miriam Makeba, and I was like, Angelique Yo, uh, these are big shoes to fill in. And then we see you working with some of these icons like Angelique Kijo. Hmm. What's that like? She's my musical mom. We speak almost every day. Um, to think of the time. I only could converse with her via email through her brother up until the time we started conversing directly. Yeah. And then eventually, when she came to Nigeria and I met her um, somewhere in Lagos, and then finally met up in Paris. So, like, we were just linking the dots, li- linking the dots, linking the dots until I finally became her daughter. Yeah. You know, and I'm really enjoying every second. Just, she's always there for me. Mm. Yeah, like, I'm so emotional thinking about her. She's, she's amazing. Shout out to Angelique. Yeah. It's been six years, I think, since your first album, King of Queens. It's been six Woo! years. Yes. Six years. Um, that was a moment, cause the first single, right, right out the gate, the first single was Johnny. Yeah. And you know, I don't need to tell stories about Johnny. We all yeah. know that you know Johnny was a crazy record. When you look back at that period, what was that like? Did you ever expect you would get to this, get this, this, this big? I always wanted to be a global superstar. I had no idea how, mm. when, what it would take. And when when Johnny shot me to the rest of the world, literally bringing the spotlight to my small corner, I just had to start playing catch up, mm. following the song everywhere, you know. So it's it's been a joyride to since mm. and Johnny still and two million views every month, up 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 until now, you know it's. It's just gathering steam on its own. It's not. It's such a classic, but still such a banger. Yeah. yeah. And I'm grateful to you know have had such a beautiful song. You know, there's this whole thing about Yemi Alade. You know, like Nigerians say, a lot of Nigerians say that you know your market is not here. Mm. That you've you've catered to like East Africa and the rest. Um, first of all, is that true? Mm. And second of all, how? Did you find that out? If it is true, right? yeah. how did you find out? Oh, I have an audience here. Let me go take care of them. Let me go feed them. Well, what are your sources to that? Um, social media. Research? Social media. Social media. That's not viable. Social media. That's not viable. But it's important because social media is such a loud place. It depends on who you're listening to. So th- also on question. social media, there are a lot of people just making up things from the top of their head. Yeah. These days, we, we need we need statistics. Um, most of my followers on Instagram, since so we talk about social media, yeah. from the 12.4 million people, are almost 50% Nigerian. Despite all the international bookings and everything, I'm still here. I'm closing down um, Shows international nice. deals here in Nigeria. So, so that's a false narrative. Yeah, it's a very false narrative. Guys, that's a false narrative. <laughs> Stop tweeting that shit. Unless you bring the numbers, then maybe I might. But we know that's not happening. I mean, you see the back end, so you know the numbers. I know the numbers. Okay. Um, but you have been able to like really break into different countries in Africa. That's something that not a lot of Nigerian It's a blessing. Stars I agree. Yeah. But blessing. I know apart from it being a blessing, there's work be- behind that. What's the work like? I just keep doing my work. I go where the love is. If you want to book me anywhere, just call me. I'll be there. As you can see, I'm here in Nigeria. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, before before we um, you know we wrap up, I'm glad we brought this we segued into this social media. Thing. Yeah. How do you deal with all the noise? Because I feel like you know from your angle, because I come online, I see tweets, yeah, me and I did this. She's the greatest. She's this. She's that. Or people comparing. How do you deal with all that noise when really? you I just don't deal with it. You just don't focus on it. Just. No? I do it. Like, um, I feel like social media is social media and then there's real life. Mm-hmm. So like if we're having real life discussions, bring it to me. But if it's social media, then that's just child's play. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So I don't I, I don't focus. I think I like that approach. I think I like it. I should adopt that. You should, <laughs> you should, because a lot of people are I just judging by the cover of the book, have yeah, no yeah. details, no research yeah. whatsoever. And in this day and age we should all research everything that we believe because it could be you tomorrow 
Yeah, true, true, true. You're very, very um, vocal about um, supporting women, and you're in, involved in a lot of advocacy work. You just became an ambassador for UNDP. Yeah, Goodwill Ambassador. Yeah, um, and you made it clear when you became ambassador that you know, bringing up women, supporting women is something that you're keen on. Yes. Um, do you have any plans to do that? And now I'm referring to the music industry, to do that within the music space. Oh yes, definitely. My arms are always open. Um, you know, they say charity begins at home. Yeah. Um, but most especially when it comes to music, I try not to focus on just gender because mm. music should have no gender. It should just be great music, you know. Okay. And but I can see that now, the female, the number of females in the music industry slightly increasing you know a little more than it was like two or three years ago yeah. you know but what am i doing for the up-and-coming female artists i'm making sure that my fire is still bright and shiny so that when they come there is somebody holding the door open for them that's one second of all um you can ask any female artists that have come across up and coming um, there's one recently signed a piece of music uh, we're trying to, you know, help her. help her. This hasn't been announced, has it? Hasn't been announced, which is why I'm not saying exclusive. Yeah, Small exclusive. Yeah, trying to help her achieve her dreams. Okay. You know, she's okay. patient enough. We're looking out for that. We're looking out for that. Shout out to whoever she is. Shout out to you. We we'll support her. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Emil. I did. We're looking forward to the new album, Empress. And as always, you always blow our minds, so we believe that this will be great. Thank you so much. Thank you.